By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And it is a Friday, and that means that we are back at the Knights of Thorn Championship, the oldest old school magic The Gathering tournament, at least in its current old school magic form, of course, MTG 9394. This is a Swedish event. It is... Uh, Super cool, man. I'm really looking forward to show you this match. We have a top eight match for you between two Urnum decks. We have Yoop versus Louis. And Yoop, of course, is playing with his signature deck, Urnum on Ice. He's taking on Louis, better known as Luki, the founder, founder of X-Points. And he is playing with Urnum, a Burnum. So he's playing with Kurt Apes, with Urnums, of course, and with a lot of burn. So it's red and green. Now, before I dive into the deck deck, I've got lovely deck photos of both of these decks. I would first like to mention that, as always, if you want to skip that section, go straight to the action. The easiest way to do this is by checking the description below, because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there. That will take you straight to the action. And in the description below, you can also find more information about this tournament, about the rules. And now, before we continue with this video i just want to um give a quick shout out to dion because it's thanks to dion that we have these lovely fantastic recordings man your setup is killer thank you so much for making these recordings and also a shout out to mari mari thank you man for organizing the knights of thorn for so long this is edition number eight and i know that edition number nine is just around the corner really looking forward to it okay and now that that is all out of the way we're going to start with the deck text i'm going to start with the deck of Yup urnum on ice let's have a look and here we see the deck of Yoop Urnum on Ice. Now we've had this deck on the channel numerous times. I've played against it. I think it's super fun to play because you always have kind of a dynamic game. Now, what does this deck want to do, you know, in case you've been uh, living under a rock? So what this deck wants to do is basically at the start win on tempo. So you see all the Moxen in here, right? You see a Soul Ring, you see a Black Lotus, you also see four Lanora Elves. So there's a pretty big chance that you can ramp it up uh, in turn number one and then turn number two or maybe even already on turn number one you can play out an ice storm destroy some lands on the side of your opponent and then of course you're ramping up with your mox and your lunar elves so you got a huge mana advantage what are you going to do with that mana advantage it's simple you're going to play out your urn of gin your sarah angel and you're going to do some attacking this deck wants to win with combat damage, right? There's there's no other way. There's no fireball in here or anything. So you want to win with that combat damage to kind of control the board and maybe even to kind of whatever hope your opponent has to crush it quite early. You have those sorts of plowshares. You have those disenchants. Another important uh, component of this deck, I feel, is Sylvan Library. If he can get an early Sylvan, he's probably going to use it super aggressive to kind of keep refilling his hand, put full pressure on his opponent, right? Just demolish anything, everything that he's going to play out, whatever he does to try to create some kind of board state. So it's it's just really brutal. And then, of course, to top that all off, he's playing with the blue power, right? Which is just really good all by itself. And it makes every deck better, I guess. So, of course, he's playing with Time Walk, Ancestral Recall, who doesn't want to draw three cards for one blue mana. And he's also playing with Brain Geyser, which is a little... I wouldn't say risky because I think his mana base is pretty good, but he does need two blue mana for that. So that can be sometimes kind of challenging. I think in general, the mana base with these type of decks are always kind of the challenge, right? Are you going to go for Lana or Elf that you can use to attack and pump with your Pendlehaven to deal some extra damage when you've got full control on board? Or are you going to go with a Birds of Paradise, which means kind of a guaranteed that you will find the mana that you need because of course it can tap for any type of mana. So those are kind of the choices that you have to make. Uh, you can see of course in this version of Urnum on Ice, Yoop is gonna go for you know the Lana or Elves first and the Birds of Paradise second, right? That is a choice that you can make. A lot of players would instinctively go for Birds of Paradise first because you're playing with three colors, especially that blue splash. But I mean, from experience, I, you'll be surprised to see how often Yoop is using the Lanora Elves to kind of deal one damage at a time with the Pendlehaven on board, even two damage at the time. It is quite good. Don't underestimate those little points of damage that you can deal with a small creature like Alana or else when you've got full control of the of the board state. Anyway, this is the deck of Yoop. I think we all know it very well. Now let's take a look at the Urnum deck of his opponent, Louis. 
And here we see the deck of Louis Burnham. Burnham, and I just first want to say it's just so cool to see decks without blue power uh, reaching the top eight. There are always a lot of those decks. So I know some people say you cannot reach it without blue power. Yes, it's possible. As a matter of fact, even powerless, there is a possibility. Now this deck is not powerless. We see both Mox in here, Mox Ruby and Mox Emerald in the deck. Uh, it's kind of your traditional Urn and Burnham deck, isn't it? Um, it's just super aggressive. It's probably very consistent. Only two colors, no splashes, which I think is a really good decision. You know, stay stay close to what you want to do and just do that really well. In this case, put a lot of pressure on early. You know, early Curdape, Taiga Curdape, classic move. You have a two three body that you can swing in with. You've got your Berserks. You've got your Giant Growth. So that alone makes it you know very risky to play against it is very explosive that way and on top of that you have your direct damage to back it up you can finish it with your four bolts with your three chains you know you can do a lot of direct damage so if you can get like 10 points of damage in with combat maybe even less you can finish it off with your direct damage now it's called uh earn and burn them of course because of all that burn we also see two disintegrates here in the deck i think disintegrate usually wins it against fireball these days for the simple reason that there are quite a lot of uh, set trolls in the format so you, you know you got to kill those trolls so it makes sense that you go with disintegrate another nice thing with disintegrate because the creature is going to be removed uh, you cannot shuffle it back in when you play like a time twister for example so that's kind of nice i think this deck is very explosive it is going to be tough because i know how quick the the urnum on ice deck can be as well because usually i think this deck wins a lot of its matches because it's so explosive you have so much pressure building up so early in the game that your opponent by the time your opponent kind of gets control of the situation they're already like in bolt range and the bolts are going to finish the job i think you know playing against Yup, it's going to be tough because Yup has so much acceleration and tempo in his early game as well that you know maybe you know louis is going to run out of steam before you know he's been able to deal enough damage to Yup, and then when Yup can st stabilize he's Yup is really the control player in this matchup when when Yup can stabilize he can walk over uh louis but then again you know if louis can get him low enough and he can win with his direct damage so it's it's for me personally i would say it's like a 60 40 where i say 60 percent for earn him on ice i don't i don't know if you care about my opinion at all <laughs> <laughs> by the way but i'm just kind of rambling to myself what deck do i think is a favorite here so i think yup's deck is a small favorite also because of that inclusion of the blue power but also because of his deck can be pretty quick just like louis deck but then again louis got direct damage and direct damage can win out of nowhere especially in combination with these very aggressive early creature uh threats so yeah it's uh it's gonna be an exciting match it's a top eight match for a reason these are two really strong decks let's just go and, and have a look and see what's gonna happen so get ready for the top eight match Yoop versus louis here we go game number one here we go and both players have taken a mulligan so they're both on six i believe it's Yoop here on the play this is uh, game one starting here with a library of alexandria so Yoop on the urnum on ice plan against louis on the uh Earn and burn him. Now remember, Yup now only has five cards in hand though. There's a Curd Ape. I think this is really good from Louis. Just put early pressure on. So Yup is gonna draw up to six. I probably think he's just gonna pass exactly. He wants to get that Loa active. So next turn, he'll be able to draw some extra cards. But of course, if Louis can just put a lot of pressure here on the life total of Yup, he's gonna make it really difficult for Yup to just, you know, sit back and, uh, and get an active Loa. Oh, look at this strip mine taking care of business. So Yup has seven cards, but the Loa is long gone. He's on 18 and now it's uh, looking pretty uh, pretty mediocre for Yup here. And oh, there is a balance. That means it takes care of the Curdip. I believe Louis also has to discard a card or does he have a Bolt, for example? Looks like he's gonna play out a Bolt here. Nope, changing his mind it seems. So he's gotta discard a card here and discarding a mountain so that's a pretty good two for one for you here you know taking care of the curd ape and uh, forcing louis to discard a card so he's got a city of brass and a pass no uh, elvish archers or script sprites or other curd apes here from louis and you know louis wants to play aggressively but it's not really working out for him and there we see a Mishra's factory on the side of Yup. I think the longer this game takes the more chances Yup has and look at this louis missing a land drop that is bad news. Tapping four. Are we going to see an Urnum? No, we're going to see a Jam Day Tome. Maybe even worse than an Urnum. This Jam Day Tome is going to give you card advantage, and that'll win him the game in the long run. He's still on 18. If you're Louis, you want to play out a land, put some pressure on the board, finding a script sprites from the top and passing it, uh, the turn. 
And I'm sure Louis is now regretting discarding that mountain when he did because he's not finding any more lands. There we see Yub digging a little bit deeper and passing the turn. So at least Louis can attack for one. Maybe if he can find a Pendlehaven, he can uh, deal two damage. Putting the sprites sideways. So Yub dropping to 17. And again a pass. This is bad news, man. Louis, you got to start playing some lands, playing some creatures, put some pressure on. I know this deck of Yub very well. The longer this takes, the worse it's going to get for him. Animating the factory. Interesting decision. Attacking here. And we do not see a bolt. So he's going to drop to 18. Still has enough mana to use a gem day tome. And in hand there, we can kind of see his hand. We see a Swords to Plowshares and two mana sources and I believe a Disenchant. That Disenchant, not a great card against Louis's deck, by the way. There's the attack. He's going to drop to 16. Now he's going to play something else out. There's a Gargoyle. So the 2-2 Flyer, one red to give it plus 0, plus 1. Granite Gargoyle. And here we see Yup drawing another card. We do know that Yup, of course, has that Swords to Plowshares in hand. I don't think he's too worried about this Gargoyle. He could now destroy the Gargoyle and attack with the factory. And he would still have enough mana open to draw a card. So yeah, that's exactly what we're seeing here. Destroying the Gargoyle. Louis going to go up to 19. Animating. Going to put him back onto 17. So he's going to stay on 17 here. And now he's got 4 mana open as well to draw an extra card. Probably just going to pass and do that on end step of Louis. I mean, if, if you're Louis, this is bad. You need to take care of the Jam Day Tome and you just need to put a lot of pressure on there. Just, you know, force you to come up with answers. I guess attacking with the Script Sprites is step number one. Why not? Put him on 15. Ooh, look at that. He's going to do something. Playing a Giant Grove, dealing four points of damage. Ah, in response, there's a Swords to Plowshares. That is too bad. So the script sprites is gone. And of course, uh, the giant grove is gone. Not quite sure why the script sprites is still on the table, to be honest. <laughs> I think Louis forgetting to take that to take care of the sprites. The sprites are gone, absolutely gone after that sorts of plowshares. And uh, there we see a city of brass. I mean, I hope just for the game, you know, that this soaring is gonna lead into like an urnum or something. Oh, Brain Geyser. Insult after injury. Even more card advantage for you, here. Yeah, now we see Louis uh, removing the script sprites. Oh, but this is bad. Louis's got nothing going for him at the moment. And look at all those cards in hand there of Yoop. Riches upon riches. He has to discard a card. He go back to seven. Discarding a tropical island. And a uh, passing to turn. And what's Louis going to do? Okay, there's a bolt. What would be nice of Louis now is if he could cast a Wheel of Fortune. That would be quite cool. I mean, he's got the mana for it. Okay, tapping four instead. Okay, there's an Urnum. At least some pressure. I am expecting Yupir to have an answer in that hand of his. But we'll just have to wait and see. Louis dropping here to 16. Okay, going aggro. I think this is a good decision. I do hope that Louis also has that Wheel of Fortune because then this, this aggressiveness even makes, uh, makes more sense. I mean, look at the life total of you. He is on nine. So that is kind of concerning. If you're in nine, you kind of start to get into that range of a good play with a Berserk, a good moment with some more direct damage, and you're dead. You know, Berserk on the urn on, on, with an attack is already eight trample damage. And I think Yoop knows this. So he's like, okay, I'm, I'm basically I'm winning because I've got more cards, but I'm on nine. So I got to make sure that Louis is unable to get more damage in. I need to protect my life total here. Tapping four. Okay, tapping five. Are we going to see a Sarah Angel? Okay, there's a Sarah Angel. Of course, Sarah Angel cannot deal with the Urnum. Disenchant here on the Soul Ring. I think that's a good decision because uh, there were some mana issues. And a Lanor Elves. Okay, so what he could do is chum block with the Lanor Elves. He could also double block Sarah Angel Lanor on the Urnum. With, of course, the risk that maybe Louis has another Giant Grove killing both creatures and not losing his own. 
I mean, it's these are difficult moments. It, it of course depends on what Yub has in hand, what Louis has in hand, what the players will decide. So there we see the attack with the 4-5, and we just see the chump block here. In a way, the chump block by itself is kind of risky, because if Louis has like a Berserk and a Giant Grove, there we see some more pressure on the board in the form of a Pixies. And remember, you've already played out two sorts of Plowshares, I believe. So he's got two more in the deck. He, of course, has that book to kind of dig a little bit deeper. I mean, the best creature to play here, actually, is an Urnum to answer the Urnum. You know, the 4-5 and the 4-5 will bounce off of each other, which is great for you with that 4-4 flyer. And again here we can see the ultimate power of Sarah Angel, right? You can attack, it doesn't tap, so you still have a blocker for those are, for the Orgovian Pixie. Can you imagine if he had to tap it to attack? I mean, a simple ability like that is just amazing in old school. There we see another Argovian Pixies, this time on the side of Yoop, which is good, you know, because it's another blocker for the 44-5 uh, Urnum. The thing is, yes, he loses a creature with the chum blocking, but on the other hand, he's got his Jam Day Tome to draw an extra card. He already, in this game, has had a lot of card advantage. It looks like he's going to do something else, though. There's an Ice Storm taking care of more lands and more mana. After that Disenchant on the Soul Ring, now an Ice Storm on the Taiga. And this is becoming pretty problematic here for Louis. So even though this Ice Storm is cast quite late in the, in the game, it's nice to see that it's still very relevant. You know, even a late Ice Storm can be relevant, especially in a format with so many special lands and people trying to, which is not the case with Louis, but a lot of people trying to splash in a color or two. You know, those, those uh, Ice Storms can be very decisive. So now Louis is going to give Forest Walk to the, uh, to the Sarah. Doesn't matter that much, but I guess technically, you know, earn him during your upkeep. It's got to give Forest Walk to a creature of the opponent, in this case, a Sarah Angel, which makes sense because it's flying, it's unblockable anyway for Louis. And Louis really being in the tank here, which is understandable, he, he's trying to find a way out. I, th I think it's going to be tough for him. Three cards in hand, only two mana. If he attacks, I wonder how Yoop's going to block. This is going to be super interesting. Is he going to animate the, the, the factory, for example, pump the factory to a 3-3, three, three, double block, pixies, and the factory. I think he's going to do that. Look at that. This is a big risk. So is the Urnum going to die, or are we going to see a giant growth or maybe a bolt on, for example, the factory? Bolt here will be ideal, but then again, uh, Louis already played out two of his bolts, two out of four. It looks like he is going to do something, though. Going to take a damage. Are we going to see a Berserk? Oh, this is really cool. So now we've got an 8-5 Trample. That means we are going to see, uh, in total, four points of Trample damage. He's going to go down to five, which is pretty risky. You know, if you're you, you're not happy with this. Yes, you have control, but you're on five, and you're playing against a deck with Burn. Of course... What is really good for Yoop is that he's disenchanted that Soul Ring and, and destroyed one of the lands because that means that even if Louis has a disintegrate in hand, it doesn't do much. There we see an attack here. So Louis is going to drop to seven. But I mean, if Louis can, can find a chain and a bolt, he's going to win, you know? It looks like there are a few options here for Yoop still, tapping four. Four. Okay, are we going to see an Urnum on the side of Yoop? Yep, there's the Urnum Jin. Both players, of course, playing with the Urnum. And there's a pass. So this is quite interesting for Louis now. I mean, he's got one more turn, right? Keeping the Argovian Pixies as a chump blocker for the Urnum. He could also just, I mean, if he's got a Giant Grove, I would just attack here. Because then if, if, if Yoop lets it go, he can kill him. Ooh, he's going to go down to six. Doesn't matter that much. I understand that. So he's on six. <laughs> Yoop helping him a little bit. Oh, I love it. And there is a Pixie. This is actually pretty good because he can use the Pixie to chump block the Sarah Angel. This is quite interesting. 
And now, of course, Joop is probably going to draw exactly draw a card on end step. Oh, he's going to go to two. That is exciting stuff. And this is interesting, right? Would you have done the same? Would you have done uh, what Louis is doing here? This is interesting, right? And we see the, the script writes getting forced walk. So he can put you on one. This is super interesting. And the reason I'm asking is Louis could also have chosen to keep the lightning bolt and to maybe, you know, bolt the Sarah and then trade the Sarah for the pixies. Oh, this is pretty painful. Another ice storm. And of course he's going to attack with both. Because he knows that Louis has to block. He has to block one of the two or he's dead. That's why Yoop is attacking with both. Is he going to put his Argovian Pixies in front of the bus or his script sprites? That is the question right now. And it is the Argovian Pixies in front of the bus. He's going to go to two. And I mean, Louis is now hoping for a Chain Lightning or a Giant Growth. Because if he has that, he's going to win. Or does Yoop here have, for example, a Time Walk? To win the game. It would make sense to kind of dig deeper with the book trying to find a time walk. He hasn't played it out yet. The time walk will win him the game here. If he gives Louis another turn. Oh, this is so exciting. Both players on two. Louis taking his turn. Remember, the script sprites has forest walk. It's unblockable. If Louis can find a giant growth or a berserk or a chain lightning or a disintegrate. He's got a lot of outs. He has won this game. He's going to go to one. Oh, no, 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 no. <sighs> oh, and there we, Yoop did have the swords to plowshares. What a mean, mean, mean man. But game number one here, a victory for Yoop. And uh, I'm really looking forward to game number two. What an exciting first game where I thought at a certain point that Yoop was... was you know, walking away with the with the game before you before I, I knew it, you was already low enough to get into that bolt range, and it it get got very very exciting all the way till the end. What a great game number one! Now both of these players are going to shuffle up, and we're going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So it's Louis on the play, which is good for his for his deck, pretty aggressive deck, right? So if he can get like a Kurt Ape, turn one, who knows? He does take a mulligan again. That is quite unfortunate. You have to do what you have to do. He's one game behind, starting with a script sprites. So that's pretty good, I guess. And oh, look at that, a library of Alexandria. Again, so you finding it in game one, also finding it in game two. In game one, it wasn't, uh, it didn't play a role at all, but I think in this game, it already uh, it already is playing a role because you you're drawing an extra card, of course. And look at him go here. Now he's out of the gates, six cards in hand, meaning next turn he can go up to seven, draw an extra card. And it's up to Louis now to try to find an answer for that uh, Loa. There's a Taiga. There's the attacks. He's going to go to 19. Can he play some more aggression? Okay, this is good. A Chaos Orb. So hopefully this is going to stick. But it's going to be a big if because Yoop, of course, is playing with Disenchance in his deck. So now it's going to go up to 8 again. This is going to be tough, man. So here we see a City of Brass. I mean, if, if you're Yoop, if you have a Disenchant, I guess you can Disenchant now. Okay, we see a Time Walk attacking Louis here. Going to put Louis on uh, 19. Yoop's going to drop to 18 because of his own City. And now he's going to take another turn. So he's going to untap. He's going to draw a card. Going to go up to 7. Going to go up to 8 with the Loa. This is looking tough already for Louis here. What a great start for Yoop. And remember, Yoop is already up a game. Tapping a green here. There is a soul ring. Tapping the soul ring for two. Tapping this for three. We're going to see an ice storm, I guess. Oh, a regrowth. Oh, man. On the time book, he's got one colorless floating still. Tapping, taking another extra turn. Oh, man. This is so tough. Yeah, you see Louis there. Whatever, man. Jesus. He's got... He, he knows the writing on the wall. If there could be some kind of miracle that the Chaos Orb gets to stick and that he gets to flip it on the Loa, that would be awesome. But I just don't see it happen here. Yupa using the Loa again, going up to eight. So he's already taken two extra turns. This is insane. And I have to say, you know, regrowth in combination with blue power is just absolutely disgusting. It's so powerful. And there we see the disenchant in hand, by the way, of Yupa. 
I guess the right thing to do for you, Pierre, is not use the disenchant now. Wait for Louis to invest that one mana. But he's not doing it, though. Not taking that risk. I do think, let me know in the comments below, I do think that would have been the better play to just kind of wait, okay, let Louis invest the mana and then in response disenchant it. But then again, you never know, you know, now Louis has stepped out and you know for certain that you can take care of the Chaos Orb. And Louis kind of smiling there knowing that this is an uphill battle. I mean, if you're in it, you're still in it. There's still a few cards that can do something. There we see the maze activation upon the attack of the, uh, the script sprites. And there we see an Argovian pixies in a pass. And you be drawing a card using the Loa. Going to go up to eight again. So I, I think that one Loa, also because of all those time walks, has already generated like four extra cards for him. It's just sick. Tapping four. Are we going to see an Urnum here? There's a Sarah Angel. Oh, tapping five, of course. Soaring generates two. So uh, he's got a Sarah Angel. And a Maze of If. Maze of If probably came in from the sideboard, like an extra one. Tapping a green here. There's another Sprites. And passing the turn. Yeah, this is so difficult for Louis now. And you can just attack here with the Sarah. So going to go up to 8 again because of that Loa. I mean, I've seen weirder things happen. It is definitely possible to get back from behind, but it's, it is unlikely. There we see the attack with the Sarah. Are we maybe going to see a block in a giant grove? Or Louis just taking the damage? He's on 18, could go to 14 here. That's exactly what's going to happen. Going to drop to 14. And there we see a Mishra's Factory. Seven cards in hand still. Look at that, a Brain Geyser as well. He's got a Suchi for some extra pressure. I think Suchi came in from the sideboard as well. Tapping four here, casting that Suchi. Yeah, this is difficult. Of course, the, the um, Argovian Pixies can block the Suchi because they take no damage from artifacts. So that's kind of nice. There we see Louis tapping the Taiga, untapping it again, passing the turn here. Yeah, and you don't just want to pass the turn when you're up against an active Loa. <laughs> you know, that's, that's not what you want to do. Uh, here we see Yoop again using that, uh, that Library of Alexandria. Really going up and up in cards. There's the attack for four. And there we see Louis going down to ten. And I get this from Louis. I mean, you can chum, but you don't want to do that. And, and we even see a second maze by Yoop. And... This is going to make it so difficult for, for Louis. Maze of If now being unrestricted for a while. It is, it is tough to play against when you're playing aggro. Then again, I mean, a maze does take, uh, is going to cost you a land drop. You know, you are going to go slower because you choose to play out the maze. Here we see a Chaos Orb on the side of Yoop, making matters even worse here for Louis. Louis on 10 at the moment, finding a forest. And this is, you know, game number two. And okay, there we see a Blood Moon. That is actually pretty devastating for Yoop, you know. This is actually quite good. Can he do something in response? Uh, of course, he's got the Chaos Orb. Yeah, he's got the Chaos Orb. I do understand the play from Louis. You got to do something. And at least, at least it clears up the Chaos Orb. Very good flip here by Yoop. Yeah, I forgot about the Chaos Orb for a moment. I guess it was wishful thinking from my side of the table because uh, I'm, of course, hoping that Louis can get back into this, but it's very unlikely here. You're going to go up to eight using it Loa again. We see a Mox Pearl in hand. Brain Guys are in hand still. Playing out of planes, going to go back to seven in hand. And yeah, Swords here on the Argovian Pixies, which makes sense because it means he can start attacking with his Suchi as well. And if he wants to, he could also attack, I guess, with his factory. I, I'm sure he doesn't mind trading the factory for two pixies. Uh, sorry, two script sprites. Paying three. Okay, there's an Argovian pixie, and he's got one mana floating, maybe to activate. Ooh, look at this. He's going, he's just going all for it. He's like, you know what? 
I don't have to use my uh, my Loa anymore. I can just go full on. Look at this, attacking with everything that he can attack with. Of course, the Argovian Pixie still having summoning sickness. Now, remember, the cool thing about Maze of If is he can also use it to take a creature out of combat. So attacking it with the 4-4 Flyer, the 2-2 Mishra's Factory, the 1-1 Lunar Elves, and the 4-4 Suchi. And you can see that Louis is completely tapped out. He's on 12. He could take all the damage, going to go down to 1. But this is going to be tough. This is really tough for Louis. Top 8 match, one game down, needs to win this one to stay in the tournament. I mean, he could also decide to kind of Chomp block with both of the sprites, only take three damage, go to eight, but then you die next turn anyway. It is, it's a catch-22. There are no good decisions to make here for Louis. And of course, for you, it's like extra easy to, to go off of the Library of Alexandria uh, line by now, you know, because you're, you're ahead enough, you've drawn enough extra cards, and you also have, of course, that, um, that Brain Geyser. He doesn't have two blue at the moment, but still... So Louis, you're trying to reason what his best line of play is going to be. He's saying, you know, if I if I block the Lanawer on on the sprites, you know, you might as well use your maze. So should I use it on your bigger creatures? It is going to be quite interesting to see what he's going to do. So yeah, he is blocking against the uh, the I guess the four four Sarah Angel, and he's blocking one against the Lanawer Elves. So yeah, he's going to go down to six. I guess that's a sensible decision to make. Like I said, the, 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 there aren't really any good decisions to make at that point. Finding a Mox Ruby, four mana. I mean, you know, he could play, let's say he's going to earn him, then still he's going to die because you can just attack with everything. The only thing that can save Louis here, I guess, is a flyer and a ground creature nope that's it louis saying you know what i'm not gonna win this let's see what he had in hand here oh that's actually not too bad curd ape and a chain lightning and, and a bolt but yeah that could only take care of for example the flyer then he could play the curd ape but he would still die yeah it is it's tough for louis and of course i guess then if he could have done that he, he could have survived one more turn but he didn't have enough red sources he had the taiga and the uh and the Mox Ruby, so he needed one extra red source to play out uh, the Kurt Ape then as well. And he needed that Kurt Ape to, I guess, block the Suchi. Anyway, it is now all water under the bridge. Yoop is going to continue to the top four, the semifinals of the Knights of Thorn right here in Dave Internet. If you want to see the semifinals, please check back in with us on Friday because then we will show you that match. And of course, we also have the finals for you the week after that. So, you know, stay in check with uh, Timmy Talks. If you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe because then you will stay up to date with all the new episodes that I'm going to upload here on the channel, usually two matches per week. So if you like this stuff, hit that subscribe button. And before you go, please take a moment to like this video and comment on this video. All these little things really help the channel move forward. And also, please consider becoming a patron via patreon.com slash timmytalks. It is quite nice. You can already join the Patreon program for just $1 a month. And for that, you get access to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? This end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazee.